call them spying on my relatives, because Fall Rivers got so old, they wouldn't let you have them anymore, so you had to go online. But they got so old, but I used to say, oh, the family moved this year, and, you know. Mm -hmm. Oops, now they moved, you know, but I used to call it spying on my relatives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, uh, the Androscoggin Historical Society also has a number of uh, other sources. Uh, we have family history files, file cabinets, uh, drawers filled with material on uh, particular families. We're not going to guarantee that we have your families. <laughs> uh, it just happens to be what we have uh, collected. But. Uh, don't leave any stones unturned. Um, we have uh, newspapers. Uh, you don't go to the Sun Journal for the newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, newspapers are on uh, microfilm at the uh, public libraries. Uh, but maybe you want, for some reason, uh, the, to look at the original. And we have the newspapers from the 1850s up to 1952. Uh, and so you can uh, check on material there. But newspapers are also now online. Uh, Google has uh, uh, archived uh, newspapers, including the local papers. Uh, and you can search for uh, individuals by name, although it isn't always reliable. It isn't always reliable because uh, I guess they're scanned in some way. Digital. And, and, and so you, uh, well, I just, to, as an example, I was looking for material on the schooner Lewiston. And the headline was S-C-H-L-L-E-R-N-E-R. -L -L -E the the, the uh, O's looked like L's to the uh, scanner. But anyway, it isn't, isn't perfect. But it, it also helps to uh, fill out some of the uh, lives of the people. I just in the past week, uh, by email, uh, sent this suggestion to uh, a person to look up his family on the uh, Google archives. Uh, and he found all kinds of things. <laughs> he was so delighted to uh, 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 see some peaks into their lives. So there are newspapers, but you may need, a, need to look at a particular date or something. We have maps. Uh, we have uh, a few vital records that have been transcribed. And so here's Lisbon, Maine. Uh, the transcription uh, of the vital mm -hmm. records. Um, that helps if, if uh, you don't want to pay all the fees that you need, may need to uh, pay uh, at the city clerk's office mm -hmm. to, uh, to get the uh, information. Uh, but these tend to be transcriptions and errors can creep in, so there's nothing like the original document. Uh, we have cemetery records. We have the Lewiston tax lists from before the Civil War. Uh, so you could find out the ups and downs of someone's life in terms of uh, uh, whether they're expanding uh, their, their farm holdings or whether they're contracting. Uh, and so uh, there's, there's a lot of material in that sort of uh, information. Um, I should also mention that there is a Franco-American Genealogical Society, which is, uh, well, now they're looking for a new home. Uh, but uh, they have uh, various parish compilations of material, uh, many family trees, uh, newspaper uh, obituaries, uh, and so on. So if you have the Franco uh, ancestry, uh, we'd recommend that you go there. Uh, Cemeteries have been mentioned. You can go to the cemeteries uh, uh, in town. I talked about newspapers. Register of probate. You go down to the register of probate's office mm -hmm. downstairs here in this building, uh, at least locally. Uh, 
for wills and adoptions. You can get family relationships mentioned in the will. I leave to my son such and such, to my daughter such and such. And especially it's helpful if the daughter has been married and you get her, her married name, uh, maybe that way. Um, the registry of deeds, uh, transactions of real estate. Uh, there may be mentions of family relationships there. Uh, who is signing the documents? Uh, but it also can help you identify someone. I, I was looking for, I was stumped, this is one of my brick walls, was stumped, by uh, James Littlefield, who was in West Gardner. Uh, but I didn't know who he was, where he came from. Uh, but I did find in the first deed that he uh, uh, transacted, uh, first piece of property he transacted, uh, he was a little field of Sanford. I went to Sanford Records and there he was. It, it matched in terms of uh, birth dates and, and so on. Uh, and also, uh, his father was there in Sanford, and there were dealings back and forth uh, with them. Uh, so that kind of uh, uh, brick wall can come tumbling down if you would look at those kinds of records. Uh, city and town reports uh, is another possible uh, place to look. It may mention your ancestor as a town officer, uh, a recipient of payments. They may do. If the auditor's report, may, if it's a small town, may, may uh, indicate all of the transactions of the town, what they purchased from whom, and so on. And so uh, maybe your ancestor sold something to the town, or, or worked for the town. Uh, or uh, tax assessments, the tax bills may be listed. Uh, tax liens, uh, whether they were residents of the uh, town farm. All, all kinds of information. You never know what you might find uh, there. So, th this is just scratching the surface, but those are probably the most uh, uh, important kinds of things you can look for. Uh, you just have to scratch around and, and see what you can find. Uh, Annette is now going to uh, give us some additional practical uh, advice uh, dealing with roadblocks road we may encounter uh, along the way for uh, advice for overcoming the walls and so on. And some of it is reiterating what you've already heard. And I do have a question though because I don't want to forget. How many of you have watched that Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are put on by Ancestry, which has really sparked a lot of interest. But if you haven't started yet, it doesn't work quite like that TV show, <laughs> where you show up in another town or you flew across the world and there they have everything laid out for you. It really doesn't work that way. But the persistence part of what they're showing in that program is really important that you have to be persistent and you have to ask a lot of questions. I, I just want to reiterate a couple of things. Libraries, and I've been to so many besides our own local ones in other states and in other towns, and I love libraries. Librarians can be the most wonderful people, and if you become a friend of a librarian and they see you coming back, they may have found something for you in between your visits. So it pays to, and there's only one library that is, happens to be in this state, I won't tell you what town, where I have run into a very nasty librarian. <laughs> but it's been a very rare exception. Very grumpy and very unhelpful. But otherwise, librarians are really, and if you tell them what you're looking for, and if you give them a little, business card or make up something with your name and your number and your email on it, they will keep their eye open many times and they can be wonderful. So the other thing is um, I can't emphasize enough 
how many mistakes you will find. And you think because you see it on the internet or you see it in a book that it must be the truth. And that is not the case. Errors and um, what I've been finding so much the last couple of years, and I think especially since I've been doing the Google newspaper archives, the old newspapers that were actually typeset with those letters that they, you know, how fast they did that, I have no idea. But a lot of the ends became U's and the U's became ends when they were printed. And you can see why. So when I was looking for Picton and I couldn't find any, and then I went browsing through each column, each page, and I found Pictu. And the first name was a match. I said, ah, oh, that was a typographical error, an old-fashioned typographical error. Anyway, I find a lot of those, and you find them in the census, and you say, this can't be the sister of the cousin of my great-grandfather that I was looking for, because the name isn't quite right, or they changed Salmon into Solomon. Or in my case, one of my um, whatever, um, brother, who was, whose name was August and the census taker turned it into Augusta. Well, I have a distant relative who keeps looking for this missing child named Augusta. And there never was one, but she believes it because she saw it in writing in the census. And it wasn't. They did not have that child. They had an August, a nice German boy's name. So there's so many errors to look for. The same thing can happen with dates. And what I found out when I started going to workshops and conferences, the one I went to in Manchester, New Hampshire, a couple years ago, was so terrific because it turned out most of the people attending were professional, registered, certified genealogists. Mm -hmm. And I was among them. Mm -hmm. This is wonderful. And everybody kept saying the same thing. And I had never heard it until that particular weekend. You must have two verifi verifiable sources for every piece of information. You cannot go by one. And if you have a second one that's sort of like the first one, then it counts as two. And then you have your little discrepancy of December 4th or December 7th. And you, and you have something to go by. And, and you so have another. You put about exactly. December 4th. Exactly. About is a wonderful word to put. Until you can find definitely what yeah. it is. Yeah. So you want to be looking for more than one source. You want to take a lot of things with a grain of salt. What I found also the hard way was when I could not find one of my great grandfathers, and I'm going back to Wisconsin again um, in a couple weeks. Um, but I went to the farm where he lived, and I still couldn't find him documented on paper. And I had been to that farm, and I was able to find it this many years later because I knew what it looked like. Well, the census, his name is so slaughtered that I would have never found him. And the, my success with that was when I found out who a relative of his married a man named Hiram Dayton, D-A-Y-T-O-N, last name Dayton like the first name Dayton, and I found that he lived on the same farm road. Well, I was curious about him because he sounded like way too old to be married to this uh, Martha woman. So I was going through the census page by page to find him. And that's when I stumbled on my great-grandfather because I was looking at every farmer on in that village. And I felt so... <laughs> Most wonderful. And if, if I hadn't just taken the time to look for every neighbor, because I was really looking for somebody else, and I thought, I'll find a clue. Um, and it really oftentimes takes that kind of persistence, don't you think? And what I didn't realize when I got started with it was that it was going to sometimes consume my life. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like bedtime, and you're still trying to do one more piece anyway. So another hard th thing that I learned um, the hard way was I didn't get organized right from the beginning. 
And when I decided to get organized,